All right, welcome back, eighth graders. So in this next lesson, we're going to be talking about application. And really, application is just a fancy world, word for real world, where we've seen linear functions um, with real world situations and not just like, here's a graph and write an equation, or here's two points, write an equation of a line. Um, and so we're going to talk about that today, or this lesson. All right, so we're just jumping in. A linear function is that y equals mx plus b. So um, here we have Josie has 1.5 cups of water in her watering can. She fills the can before watering her plants, and water flows into the watering can at a rate of one cup for every four seconds. Um, so there's a lot of information just in this, right? We already know. This is like a start, right? And so that's our initial value. Um, and then here we have a rate, right? And so that's going to be our slope. We also see the keyword every. So both of these things let us know that we're talking about our slope right there. Um, so then when we look at this, it says write each value or equation for the linear function. So the first thing says, uh, what is the rate of change of the function? Well, we know one cup for every four, se uh, four seconds, right? One cup uh, every four seconds. No. I love it when it does this. All right, so one cup every four seconds while I pull that back up. Um, it's trying to do it to me again. All right, uh, rate of change is your slope. So what that means, your slope of your line is one fourth. We could also write this up here as one fourth, but Rate of change, slope of the line, same thing, both one-fourth. Uh, Y-intercept of the line, right? When we look at this, we know we're below 2. When we go up here, it says that we start at 1.5 cups of water. So our Y-intercept is 1.5. Our initial value of the function is 1.5. So this slide basically is having us go through. I kept all those there because so I want you to realize rate of change is slope. Initial value is your y-intercept. They are the same thing. And so function rule, that's our slope-intercept form. And so that's going to be y equals our slope, right, mx, so 1 fourth x plus our initial value, our y-intercept, 1.5. And so even though when we're working with real world, we start talking about the rate of change and the initial value, they are no different than slope and y-intercept. We're looking for those same things. So just to kind of uh, keep that in perspective for you. But that becomes our equation of that line. All right, so then example two, the linear function in the graph models the height off the ground in feet of a person riding a zip line at t, t seconds after pushing off from the platform. So you've got an equation here, right? We've got our graph, right? It's asking how high off the ground is the platform. So it models the height off the ground. And we're starting from pushing off from the platform. So this is our platform. So we're looking for that initial value. And whether we find it in the graph or whether we find it in our equation, right, our y-intercept, we know that the platform is starting off 100 feet from the ground and so that's our initial value on this one all right um, example three the after school activity club charges $25 to join for the year so that's a one-time fee uh, for that year right or a yearly fee and then it charges a materials fee of five dollars for each and that's our keyword right there, activity that you choose. So that for each is telling us that we have a slope. For each, for every, um, those things mean slope. Those keywords mean slope. So we're going to write a linear function to model our cost, C. So that's the same as Y, of joining the club and choosing T activities. And so our T is going to be the same as our X. All right, so we're going to do C equals, we know that we are charged $5 for each activity we choose, so that's going to be a 5x. 
5x. We're supposed to be using t instead of x. Silly Mrs. Cartwright. So make that a t. 5t. Um, plus the one-time yearly fee of $25. So this is our function um, for joining the club and choosing activities. So now it wants us to find the value of the function if t equals negative 3. And so all that means is plug negative 3 in for t. So c will equal 5 times negative 3 plus 25. And so that would be negative 15 plus 25. So c will equal 10. And so that's $10 uh, when t is negative 3. Now, for what values does this function make sense? Now, I don't know if you did, but when I first saw that, t being negative 3, t's activities. How are you doing negative 3 activities? So really, what values will make sense for this function? Only positive values make sense. Only positive t values make sense sense because you can't choose sorry I'm writing and I'm speaking faster than I write you can't choose negative activities it just doesn't make sense now did we end up with a positive cost? Yes, but that's beyond the point. It does not make sense for us to, that's like saying, I, I'm i wanting you to pay me for something. Uh, so it just doesn't make sense for this situation. I'm going to pause or I'm going to take this video. We're going to stop it here. We've got two more examples, um, but I don't want to rush through them. But at the same time, I don't want to make this video go any longer. So I will see you in the next video for these next examples. Until then, 8th graders.